Hey everyone, welcome back to Code Duck. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about how creaky this chair is. Oh my word. I didn't use my normal office chair because I felt it was a little too creaky on camera and I made a terrible second decision. Oh, okay, we're here now, so let's just roll with it. So today I'm going to talk about a topic that a lot of people have a lot of questions about and that is what is the practicality of web scraping. So a lot of what I do has to do with web automation. A lot of people wonder, it isn't... Uh, web scraping just what bad people do to get my email address and spam me with stuff and while the answer to that question is yeah bad people do do that uh, it doesn't mean that that's all that web scraping is for so web scraping is actually a really really broad subset of web automation um, for the purpose of collection of data however that's its particular definition but actually web scraping is used to define a lot of things not just the acquisition of data but also the posting of data the putting of data, the automation of tasks between the front end and the back end. Um, web scraping is used as glue code a lot. A lot of times companies will web scrape themselves to get information and then there's other companies that use it to build APIs. Quandle is a great um, representative of that. I think what today I'm going to talk about is that this is the, the first post in a series of um, what we're going to do with practical web scraping. So this particular series we're going to look at the automation of posting blog posts to a third-party blogging website. So a lot of folks out there, especially developers, but anybody really who runs their own business, a lot of times they have their own blog, but then to gain more visibility and SEO, will then post on Medium or they'll post on Dev.2, which is what we're gonna to refer to today, or Tumblr, they post a lot of different places. So what we're gonna look at today is how we can automate the process. So what we're gonna be looking for and what we're gonna be doing in this blog series is we're going to look at the basics and demonstration of how to uh, prep a website and a web asset, how to scan it um, manually, because we're going to the websites. That's a big thing, we're not gonna blind scrape. So how do we get what we need to scrape the website? How do we build a simple scraper that will do what we need it to do? Uh, three, we're gonna look at how to then refactor that to use it just as a command line argument. We basically run a little command line program that posts all of our blog post to a particular website. And then we're gonna look uh, in this series at how to hash different files and update whether or not they've been edited and then push those edits to our blogging uh, platform. Uh, so those are the four things we're gonna cover. We're gonna basically today, we're gonna look at part one of that, which is how are we gonna prep our bot and start building it. So what we're eventually gonna do today is we're gonna build a simple web scraper that logs in automatically to the blogging platform we're going to use. Now the blogging platform we're going to use is one that I absolutely love. Uh, it's called Dev.2. It's for technical professionals and software developers. Um, the team over there like Ben and Sloan and Ali and all of those guys over there, you guys do an amazing job of keeping uh, this very relatively small but really, really important sector of the blogging community. Like they're excellent at moderating content. It's a fantastic place where there's very, very little trolling and, and people keep a really close eye on it. And the people who built it are fantastic developers, engineers, designers, marketing folks. And the people who are there, it's the most supportive developer community that I've ever run into. And I post on Medium and I post on Reddit and anybody who knows those two platforms knows that you can get some trolls. I've never run into that on Dev.2 yet. Hopefully it'll stay that way. Um, but that's what we're gonna use. We're basically gonna gonna build a project by the, not the end of this video. At the end of this video, we're gonna be able to have a script that will automatically log us in to Dev.2 and bring us to the page where we can put in our content and our markdown post. By the end of this series, you're gonna be able to not only do that, but you're then gonna be able to uh, build a scraper structure, which is gonna have a file hierarchy that's gonna contain your blog posts that aren't yet finished, your blog posts that are finished but unposted, and your blog posts that are posted but have been edited. And we're gonna learn on how to do file hashing and how we're gonna automate uploading of stuff to Dev.2. And then what you're gonna gain as a skill from this, what I'm gonna want you to do for homework, is once we're done with this series, uh, to the point where we've got everything the way we want it to, I want you to build another part of the scraper that doesn't focus just on Dev.2, but you're gonna focus on another destination, which is Medium or Tumblr or Reddit, and you're gonna add that piece yourself so that you can cross post, write a blog post in one place, and it will automatically post or update anywhere that you have built 
an automation script to, to find. So we're gonna get into it right now. We're gonna head into our text editor. I use Visual Studio Code, but if you use Sublime Text or even Full Visual Studio or Atom, whatever, does not matter, you can follow along with me. And let's get going on some code. And this is uh, in the interpreter now. So we're gonna be making this file. Uh, we're just gonna be starting and testing things today. So I have the push to dev directory, which is gonna be the name of the project. Uh, and we're gonna start oh, uh, create a new file called uh, push dot pi which we're going to misspell and then we're going to import uh, some of our dependencies the dependencies we're going to be using are an HTTP request library request is my favorite you can use URL lib if you like uh, from there we're going to be importing our HTML parser I use beautiful soup and we're going to misspell that twice uh, and then from there we're going to be importing a selenium web driver which we're going to use for browser automation if HTTP requests are not enough and instead of misspelling this time Visual Studio Code is going to autocorrect in a really annoying way so from there we're going to be importing our uh, proxy library this uh, full disclosure I actually built it make it keeps track of IP addresses and user agents uh, that will allow us to mask the default user agent of selenium which is blocked by a lot of filters and actually give it a real user agent uh, and that is slitherlib.slither we're going to import snake and snake contains a list of all those IPs that we have uh, kept track of over the years as well as user agents and then we're going to import our uh, virtual environment we're going to go down in the terminal and create a python 3 virtual environment we're going to call it venv that's going to store all our dependencies and it's going to separate them from our default machine so that we're not uh, adding a ton of dependencies that we only need from one project. To handle our dependencies, rather than pip installing them all, we're gonna use requirements.txt, we're gonna misspell requests as is our custom, and then we're gonna add BS4, which is a beautiful soup library, Slitherlib, which again, that sexy library is one that yours truly actually wrote. Um, we're gonna import that, or at least we're gonna install it, and then we're gonna use Selenium, we're gonna install that as well. Uh, and then I like to check what directory I'm in way more often than I should. And we're gonna set the source of our Python files to our virtual environment so that all our dependencies and anything we do gets installed in that virtual environment and not on our global machine. Then we're gonna pip install requirements.txt, misspelling and forgetting to add the R switch that will uh, help us to install from the text file. That is going to run, install all of our dependencies and now we have what we need to start our project so what are we going to do to start our project we are actually going to physically go to the website those of you who know me know that i am not a huge fan at all of blind scraping if we want to automate something we need to know how to do it by hand really really well so we're going to be automating pushing blog posts to dev.2 a great 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 website for developers and technical professionals to kind of talk and blog it's basically like medium for developers but uh, a lot better because they don't steal your content so then we're going to go to the write a post uh, page and we're going to get that url which is dev.2 slash new then we're going to go into the requirements.txt file and try to set a variable in it realize quickly that that's a terrible mistake and go back into our python file which will put source url misspelling once again that is our custom after all we don't want to speak against tradition we're going to use the url of http dev.2 slash new now this particular um, page requires a login so what we're going to do is we're going to open the browser tools and i'm kind of going to skip through this part because i'm trying to find uh, the html or http parameters that will allow me to submit a blog post just via http requests and a lot of these uh, requests that we've submitted here as you can see contain my uh, cookie and session id we don't want anybody stealing those not that i don't trust you but i don't trust you so we'll be back in a second Okay, so it turns out that I wasn't able to find the URL query parameters or the URL encoded parameters to get this uh, logged in just via HTTP. Uh, so it turns out what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use Selenium. A lot of times you can reverse engineer the URL query parameters, but in this case, uh, Ben and Sloan and those over at Dev.2 have done a good job of really hiding that and making it hard. So we're going to use Selenium instead, which is basically browser automation uh, that allows us to actually open a web browser in an automated fashion and uh, work with that. We can eventually do it head list so the browser doesn't open in our face but to do that we're going to import selenium web driver being aware of putting the imports in in the correct order like i just didn't and we're going to support the web driver import options which is going to allow us to add a custom user agent to selenium selenium does have a default user agent that is blocked by a lot of filters and we want to use one of the user agents that we keep in slitherlib so we're going to define options without parentheses because we forgot to do that and we are ogs when it comes to programming we use the doc 
docs. Never let anybody tell you that the docs are for noobs or for people who don't know what they're doing. We Google stuff all day long as engineers. So here we are with the Selenium WebDriver documentation for Python. And essentially we're gonna be using those a lot. Never be ashamed to Google stuff. We're gonna misspell the language that we use two times. And then we're gonna be looking for the Python documentation, which will be our Selenium bindings here that we're gonna be using. So now we're looking up how to add a user agent to the header of Selenium. Again, I do this stuff all day long and still I forget the really tiny little things like this that should be common knowledge. Some things just slip your mind. Never be ashamed of that ever, ever. You are doing your best just by programming and we Google stuff all day long. We don't Google the structure or the main things in our projects, but little stuff like this, we absolutely Google all the time and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I just added the parentheses there uh, because I finally remembered I was doing it wrong. And then we're on this page. It's just gonna show us how we add that user agent to do so. We're gonna add the options parameter, which we've already done. And then we're gonna add the add arguments function to that, which is gonna specify our user agent so options dot add arguments gonna make sure I get the syntax right we're gonna pass the user agent as a string with an equal sign which is gonna be our next the user agent the, well, on the other side of the equal sign is gonna be our actual user agent which is going to be a, a random selection from the snake.uas library so we're gonna make this an f string because the whole thing has to be a string and I hate putting dot format at the end with the little percent signs it drives me crazy and this is Python 3 so we don't have to do that then we're gonna add a string literal here snake.uas which is our list of user agents in slitherlib and uh, then we're gonna remember in a second that we didn't import the choice function from random. So we're gonna go up top, we're gonna do from random import choice, but we're gonna spell it form because again, tradition, and we're gonna import the choice, which is basically that does the same exact thing as, you know, uh, random dot randint uh, zero to len of range or range of len of the list it's just a lot less typing so we're going to do it that way then we're going to do driver which is going to be our driver uh for working with the web webdriver.chrome and then we're going to see how we add that argument just to make sure we've got all that argument in there we just want to make sure the syntax is correct we've got it and then we're going to pass the options parameter to chrome options now at this point the chrome options parameter is deprecated and we're going to be fixing that later on, but we're just gonna be using that for the time being, because again, we just wanna get things working. We just want things to be functional, and we can always iterate later. It doesn't have to be pretty at first, it just has to work, we can make it pretty later, but making something that doesn't work pretty is kind of a useless thing. So we're running our function and file. We get the dev.2 new page, but we see it requires a login. So what are we gonna do about this? Well, we are going to sign in. We are actually gonna click that sign in with GitHub button, and we are going to fill in fields on the next page. To do that, we'll open the browser tools. We'll select the select button in the top left of the browser tools, a little square with a mouse cursor on it. We will select the button, click on the button with that, and copy its X path, which is basically where it is on the page as far as HTML is concerned. Uh, there's some great blog posts about X paths if you wanna know more, but I'm not gonna cover much of them there. Then we're gonna define the sign in button very variable and we're going to assign to it the drive dot get or driver or dot get element by xpath with the xpath which basically says hey selenium this is where we are going to find that xpath and we have totally forgotten that it's not get elements by xpath it is find elements by xpath come on bro come on bro you got this bro you're gonna get it bro come on yeah do that find element not get find not get find not get find oh and we're going to the docs. That is what we do. If you get little things, don't just try to be arrogant and pound away at it until you figure it out. I mean, that's a great thing to do, pound away until you figure it out, but never ever be afraid to check the documentation or to ask for help. I cannot stress that enough. Ah, and we found that it's not get elements, it is find elements. So we're gonna find that element. Then we're going to do the sign in button dot click, which sends a Selenium web driver sign in to that button or sends a click to that button which we're gonna to use to log in to our uh, session with dev.2. So at this point, we're just gonna test everything, see if we've got it working so far. And we do, it brings us to that. And now it clicks on the sign in with GitHub button, which is exactly what we wanted, great. So we're gonna to try to enter in our credentials now. At this point, to do that, we're gonna to go to the browser selection, uh, browser tools selection, we're gonna select the username field, we're gonna get its xpath. And from that, we're gonna copy that XPath into a variable in our project so that we can tell Selenium where the username field is. Username field equals driver.find 
we remembered the find element by xpath and then we're going to put in the xpath of the username field that we're going to use to log into dev.2 and then going to do the same thing with the password field. I am, of course, going to blur that out. Not that there is really anything to gain from stealing my dev.2 profile, but I don't want people to do it anyway. We're always going to use security best practices here. So we're going to find that by XPath to get that XPath. Once again, we're in the browser tools, the element selection button. Then we're going to copy the XPath and paste that into our variable for password field. Finally, we're gonna to need to click that button to log in. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna do the same thing we do uh, with all other elements. We're gonna get the element selection tool. We're going to select the button. We are going to copy the X path. We are gonna set the sign in button variable driver dot get element by X path. Oh, we actually didn't remember the get element. We, we remembered get, we, remember, we didn't remember find. We remembered find on this one. See, even in the voiceover, I totally forget about find. But, you know, the last source finally crosses the finish line and we get find element by xpath for all three, uh, for all three elements. I not get find, bro, not get find. Um, so now we've got everything that we've got. We've got everything that we need rather and we're going to send the click and send keys events. Now I have to look at the documentation for this one because there was a time when it used to be submit in Selenium and it has since changed to send keys. And at the time of recording this video, I had kind of forgotten that. So I want to just browse through the documentation. We go to page objects, just looking around in the docs. This is the biggest thing we do. We have to read the documentation. Otherwise we're going to be Googling things for the rest of our life and we're never going to learn. So I look for fill because it used to be fill and send keys or submit. And apparently that's not the case anymore. So we're looking for how we're basically going to send stuff to the API. We find it and it is send keys in the documentation. So then we are going to start sending keys to the username field and the password field. We're going to make sure we get the syntax correct. We don't want to get the syntax wrong. Username field dot send keys. So we're going to send our username to that field. It's going to autofill in Chrome. That's my username. And then we are going to send our password, which is going to be uh, blurred out for you greedy, dirty little hobbitses who probably want to steal my dev.2 stuff. Oh, that's not true. But anyway, security best practices, right? So we're going to blank that out as we go. Those keys are going to be sent. Then we are going to send a dot click event to the sign in bottom, apparently, which sounds a lot kinkier than it should. And we are going to close down the page. Also, these chromes that open at the bottom, those are going to be a nuisance with Selenium. And later on in the tutorial, we're going to show you how that works, how we're going to get rid of that and how we're going to uh, make those close whenever the web driver ends. So we're going to run our page. We get the no thanks, then we submit everything by clicking the button, and now we have logged in. So we have sent keys, we have logged in, we have gotten to the new page, the next series we're going to cover. How do we get a markdown blog post into here? So stick with me and we will be back for part two.